Hello there everybody, Martin here from Affinity 4 Commander. Today we have a blast from the past featuring the four face commanders from the 2017 Precon decks. So without further ado, let's take a look at those opening hands. I am playing Martin's Edgar Markov Vampire Tribal Deck and keep an opening hand containing Indulgent Aristocrat, Skull Clan, Nighthawk Scavenger, Olivia Crimson Bride, Blood Saint Maya, Aldaran Estate, and a Swamp. Johnny is playing Maya Nala Archmage Ritualist Wizard Tribal Deck and keeps a starting hand of Is It Signet, Rakdos Signet, Champion of Wits, Ancient Tomb, Crumbling Necropolis, River Glide Pathway, and an Island. Tom is playing my Arabo Roar of the World Cat Tribal Deck and starts the game with a hand of Steel Shaper's Gift, Fleece Main Lion, Shamanic Revelation, Oval Palace, Path of Ancestry, and Wooded Bastion. And finally, Connor is playing his The Ur Dragon Dragon Tribal Deck, keeping an opening hand of Orb of Dragon Kind, Three Visits, Sky Shard Claim, Wrathful Red Dragon, Cavern of Souls, Katria Triome, and Watery Grave. Connor wins the die roll, plays Katria Triome, and passes to Tom. Tom plays Path of Ancestry, and passes. I play a Swamp, and cast Indulgent Aristocrat. Edgar Markov's Eminence ability triggers, creating me a 1-1 Vampire token, and I end my turn. Johnny plays Ancient Tomb, taking 2 damage to tap it, and casts Is It Signet. With some painful turns ahead of him, he passes to Connor. Connor starts his turn by playing Cavern of Souls, naming Dragon. Next, he casts 3 Wizards, putting Jetmere's Garden into play from his library, and passes. Tom plays Wooded Bastion, and casts Fleece Main Lion. Out of mana, he ends his turn. I play Voldaren Estate, and tap out to cast Lightning Greaves. I equip the fancy footwear to my non-token vampire, move to combat, and attack Johnny with my shoeless creature. Lacking any creature to block with, Johnny takes the one damage, and I pass the turn to him. Johnny plays an island and casts Rakdos Signet. Not wanting to lose life to his other land, he passes the turn. Connor pays two life to play an untapped Godless Shrine, and then casts Sky Shroud Claim. So much ramp! He searches his library for Stomping Ground and Zeotora's Proving Ground, puts them both into play tapped, and ends his turn. Tom begins his turn by playing Fortified Village, revealing a forest from his hand to have it enter the battlefield untapped. Next he casts Steel Shaper's Gift, searching his library for Sword of the Animist. Tom puts the equipment into his hand, casts it, and moves to combat. Here he uses Arabo's ability to give his Lion plus 3 plus 3, and attacks Connor with the Fleecy Boy, dealing him 6 damage. With nothing more to do, Tom passes to Alex. In my turn, I cast Skull Clamp, and move to combat. Here I attack Tom with both of my creatures, dealing him 2 damage, and gaining 1 life from my Aristocrat's lifelink. In my second main phase, I attach my Clamp to my token vampire Skull, killing him, and drawing me 2 cards. I then play All Self Basilica, return my Swamp to my hand, and pass. Johnny plays Lava Glide Pathway, and ends his turn without casting anything. How suspicious. Connor plays a tapped Watery Grave, and then casts Scourge of Valkas. The Dragon's ability triggers, and Connor deals 1 damage to me, before casting Orb of Dragon Kind. Out of mana, he passes to Tom. Tom plays Bountiful Promenade as his land for turn, and equips Sword of the Animus to Fleece Main Lion. Moving to combat, he gives the kitty plus 3 plus 3 with his commander's ability, and attacks Alex with the now 7-7 creature. The sword triggers, and Tom puts a planes onto the battlefield tapped in this way. Unable to block, Alex takes 7 damage, and Tom passes the turn. I play a swamp, and cast Nighthawk Scavenger. Edgar creates me a 1-1 vampire, and Johnny responds by countering the rogue with Arcane Denial. Moving to combat, I seek revenge on Johnny, dealing him 1 damage with my Indulgent Aristocrat. I gain 1 life from the vampire's lifelink, and not wishing to do anything else, end my turn. Johnny draws 1, and Alex draws 2 in Johnny's upkeep thanks to Arcane Denial. Johnny then plays Crumbling Necropolis, and passes to Connor. 
In his turn, Connor plays Wooded Foothills, immediately paying one life to sacrifice it. He searches his library for a forest, puts the land onto the battlefield, and uses it to help cast Frontier Siege. Connor chooses the Dragon's effect of the enchantment, and then cast Wrathful Red Dragon. Frontier Siege and Skurd of Valkus's abilities trigger, and Connor chooses to have his latest dragon fight Tom's Lion. The sword wielding cat is destroyed, and Connor deals Tom 4 damage with his Wrathful Dragon's ability. Not yet finished resolving triggers, Connor deals 2 damage to my Vampire Token with his Scourge's ability, and then moves to combat. Here he attacks me with his non summoning sick dragon, dealing me 4 damage and passes. Tom plays Opal Palace as his land for turn, and casts a Rescos Explorer. He searches his library for a scattered grove, puts the land into his hand, and casts Sword of Feast and Famine before ending his turn. In my turn, I cast Veto, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, and Edgar makes a 1-1 vampire as I do so. Next, I play Bloodstained Mire, paying 3 life to put an untapped Sacred Foundry into play for my library. Not yet finished, I use the Foundry to help cast Legion Lieutenant, creating another vampire token in the process, and move to combat. Here, I attack Johnny with my Greaves-wearing Aristocrat, dealing him 2 damage and gaining 2 life. Veto triggers and I have Tom lose 2 life in this way before passing to Johnny. Johnny begins his turn by taking 2 damage from Ancient Tomb and casts Stony Brook Banneret. He uses Enola's Eminence ability to create a token copy of the Merfolk, reducing the cost of his wizards by 2, and pays a single mana to cast Champion of Wits. Johnny once again chooses to create a copy of his creature and then resolves both Nargus ETB abilities. He draws 2 discards 2, draws 2 more, discards 2 more, and pays 2 life to play an untapped blood crypt. Moving to combat, Johnny attacks Connor with both of his haste tokens, one of which Connor is unable to block thanks to its island walk. Connor blocks the other creature with his dragon, taking 1 damage, and Connor chooses to deal 2 damage to Johnny with his wrathful red dragon's ability. That is such a bonkers effect. Feeling slightly silly for his actions, Johnny passes the turn, exiling his tokens as he does so. In his turn, Connor casts his commander, the Ur Dragon, which triggers Scourge of Valkas and Frontier Siege as it enters the battlefield. Connor deals 3 damage to Legion's Lieutenant with his Scourge, and has the Ur Dragon fight Veto, destroying both vampires. He then uses Wrathful Red Dragon's ability to deal 1 damage to one of my vampire tokens killing it, and moves to combat. Here, Connor attacks Johnny with his Wrathful Dragon, and Tom with his Scourge. The Ur Dragon's ability triggers, with Connor drawing two cards, and putting a Zendikar Resurgent into play without paying its mana cost. Damage then occurs with Johnny taking five, and Tom taking four, and a rather pleased looking Connor ends his turn. Tom plays a forest and casts his commander, Arabo, Roar of the World. He scries the top card of his library to the bottom with Path of Ancestry, equips Sword of Feast and Famine to his Explorer, and moves to combat. Here Arabo's ability triggers, but sadly fizzles given that a rescue Explorer has protection from green, and Tom attacks Connor with his sword wielding Kitty. Unable to block with his 5 coloured dragon, Connor takes 4 damage and then discards a card due to Sword of Feast and Famine's effect. Tom untaps his lands, and immediately cycles Scattered Groves. With nothing more to do, Tom passes to Alex. I play a swamp and cast both sides of Wear and Tear. I target Zendikar Resurgent and Orb of Dragon Khan with the spell, and Johnny responds by flashing in Dualcaster Mage, copying the creature with his commander's ability. Johnny copies my Wear and Tear twice, destroying Frontier Siege, Sword of the Animus, and Lightning Greaves in this way. The original version of the spell then resolves, destroying the rest of Connor's artifacts and enchantments, and I equip Skullclamp to my vampire token. The creature dies, I draw two cards, and move to my end step. The token copy of Jewelcaster Mage is exiled, and I pass the turn. Johnny casts his commander, Inala, Archmage Ritualist, and ends his turn. Connor starts his turn by playing Flooded Strand, and then sacrifices a forest to return Earthquake Dragon from his graveyard to his hand with their own ability. 
the next corner pays one life in order to sacrifice his fetch land, followed by a further two life to have the temple garden he treated for enter untapped. Not yet finished, Connor pays a whopping one mana to cast Earthquake Dragon and then deals four damage to Johnny with Wrathful Red Dragon. Still not finished, Connor casts Nicobolus the Ravager, once again triggering his Red Dragon's ability. This time he deals 5 damage to Arabo, destroying the Lion King, and Connor forgets about Bolas' ETB. Whoopsie daisy. Moving to combat, Connor attacks Tom with his commander and Wrathful Dragon, and me with his Scourge. Tom responds to this by flashing an Alms Collector, and the Ur Dragon's ability then triggers. Both Connor and Tom draw a single card, and Connor puts Sylvia Brightspear onto the battlefield granting his dragons double strike. Connor chooses not to search his library with Sylvia's pawn ability, and prior to damage, Johnny takes two damage from his tomb to flash in Avenger Shaper Savant. He copies the wizard with Inala, sacrificing the clone to the legend rule, and bounces the Ur dragon and Sylvia to Connor's hand with the two creatures' ETBs. Talk about raining on Connor's parade. Tom thanks Johnny for saving his life, and damage then occurs, with Tom taking 5 and me taking 4. Absolutely livid, Connor passes to Tom. A rather shaken Tom begins his turn by playing Sungrass Prairie, and recasts his commander. Moving to combat, he targets Arms Collector with Arabo's ability, and attacks Connor with a Rescuous Explorer. Once again unable to block the cat, Connor takes 4 damage. He discards a card, and Tom untaps all of his lands before moving to his second main phase. Here he casts Shamanic Revelation, drawing 3 cards, and gaining 8 life thanks to the plus 3 plus 3 that Arabo gave his collector. Synergy. With 3 mana still available, Tom passes. I play Temple of Triumph, scrolling the top card of my library to the bottom, and cast Olivia Crimson Bride. I miss Edgar's trigger, like an absolute donkey, move to combat, and attack Tom with my hasty newlywed. Olivia's ability triggers, and I return the Nighthawk scavenger in my grower to the battlefield, tapped and attacking Connor. Connor declares no blocks, taking 7, Tom takes 3, and I gain 7 thanks to my scavenger's lifelink. Out of mana, I end my turn and Johnny responds by tapping all 5 of his wizards with Inala's ability to have me lose 7 life, before proceeding to his turn. Johnny begins his turn by throwing Riptide Laboratory onto the table, considers his options, and passes to Connor. In his turn, Connor activates Nicol Bolas' ability, transforming him into Nicol Bolas the Arisen. He activates the newly ignited Planeswalker's minus 4 ability, putting the Veto Thorn of the Dust Rose in my graveyard onto the battlefield under his control, and passes. Tom plays a forest and then casts Tima Sabertooth. He scries one thanks to Path of Ancestry, putting the top card of his library on the bottom, and casts Metallic Mimic, naming Cat. Not yet finished, Tom casts Kemba, Car Regent, who enters with a plus one plus one counter thanks to the Mimic. Moving to combat, Tom attacks Alex with his Explorer, and unable to block, Alex takes 4. Alex discards a card, and Tom untaps his lands before ending his turn. I begin my turn by playing Temple of Malice, moving the top card of my deck to the bottom. Next I move to combat, attacking Johnny with all 3 of my vampires, and return Vona, Butcher of Magan, to the battlefield with Olivia's ability. I have the Vampiric Knight enter attacking Johnny, and Johnny responds by tapping all five of his creatures to have me lose seven life. He then uses Riptide Laboratory to return Venser to his hand, takes two damage from Ancient Tomb to recast him, and pays one mana to make a copy of him with Inala. The copy immediately dies, and Johnny targets both my legendary vampires with his two ETBs. I respond by sacrificing Vona to Indulgent Aristocrat, putting a plus one plus one counter on each vampire I control, and then repeat this process with my bride. Nighthawk Scavenger is exiled thanks to the ability it gained from Olivia, I put a second plus one plus one counter on my Aristocrat, and Johnny blocks the attacking creature with his Venser clone. I gain three life from my creature's lifelink, 
move to my post combat main phase, and cast a Vindicate, targeting Venser. The pesky wizard is destroyed, and I pass to Johnny. In his turn, Johnny casts Void Mage Progeny and decides not to pay an extra mana to create a token copy of them. <gasps> not wanting Connor to gain a huge amount of life in his next combat phase, Johnny casts Comet Storm, dealing Vito 3 damage. The vampire is returned to Alex's graveyard, and Johnny passes the turn. Connor recasts Sylvia Brightspear, once again ignoring her partner ability, and uses his remaining mana to cast Balefire Dragon. Connor deals 4 damage to Tom's Arms Collector with Scourge of Valkyrie's ability, killing it, and activates Bolas's plus 2 ability. He draws 2 cards, plays here of the Spirit Dragon as his land for turn, and moves to combat. Here he attacks Johnny with Earthquake Dragon, and unable to block the flyer, Johnny taps all of his creatures to have Connor lose 7 life. With no way of saving himself, Johnny then takes 20 damage from the double striking flyer, knocking him out of the game. With one less player between him and victory, Connor ends his turn. Tom untaps, draws, and passes to Alex. I play Path of Ancestry, equip my skull comp to Indulgent Aristocrat, and move to combat. Here I attack Connor with my lone creature, and a rather confused Connor blocks the vampire with Balefire Dragon. The dragon deals lethal damage to my creature with first strike damage, destroying it without taking any damage itself, and I draw two cards thanks to my clamp. In my post combat main phase, I cast Merciless Eviction, choosing to exile all creatures, and Tom responds by activating Team of Sabretooth's ability four times. He returns all of his other creatures to his hand, and all remaining creatures in play are exiled. With Connor's game-ending board now dealt with, I pass the turn. Connor starts his turn by playing Bloodstained Mire, and pays one life to sacrifice to fetch land. He searches his library for a mountain, puts it into play, and casts Rhythm of the Wild. Next, Connor uses Nicol Bolas' minus 4 ability to put the Lathless Dragon Queen in his graveyard onto the battlefield, choosing to have the dragon enter with haste thanks to his enchantment. Still not finished, Connor taps his remaining mana to cast Old Norbone, once again choosing to give the creature haste with Rhythm of the Wild. Lathless's ability triggers, creating Connor a 5-5 dragon token with flying, and Connor then moves to combat. He he attacks Alex with both of his legendary dragons, dealing him 13 damage, and creating 13 treasure tokens thanks to Old Norbone. Now that is just a little bit ridiculous. In his second main phase, Connor sacrifices 9 of his treasures to recast the Ur Dragon, creating himself another dragon token as he does so. Pleased of how he has recovered from the board wipe, Connor ends his turn. Tom recasts Metallic Mimic, once again naming Cat, and recasts his commander. He scries one thanks to the Path of Ancestry, keeping the top card of his library where it is, and Arabo ends with a plus one plus one counter thanks to Tom's Mimic. With no way to block Connor's flyers, Tom passes to me. Alex plays a mountain and casts Malakia Blood Witch. Edgar triggers, creating him a vampire, and Alex drains two life from Connor and Tom with the Shaman's ETB. Desperately looking for answers, Alex equips Skullcomp to his token, sending it to the graveyard and drawing two cards. Not yet finished, he casts Sorin, Imperious Bloodlord, and activates his second plus one ability. Alex sacrifices his Blood Witch to the ability, having Sorin deal Connor 3 damage and gaining 3 life, reducing Connor's life total to 0. Unfortunately for Alex, he is unable to find a way of saving himself from Thomas' creatures, and concedes the game to him. Well, that is it for another game. I hope that you enjoyed watching these four classic commanders in action. I'd like to give a huge thank you to each and every one of our incredible patrons, without whom we'd be unable to continue making content such as this. Also, be sure to check out our affiliate links in the video description. It won't cost you anything extra to purchase items through these, but it really helps out the channel. And finally, you can help to support us in four quick and easy ways. Liking this video, subscribing, hitting the bell icon, and leaving us a comment. I read every one. That's it for now though, we'll see you next time. Stay awesome!